We're beginning to talk about lines, and we're going to talk about lines today and tomorrow specifically. We're going to talk about their components, the different parts of lines. So first of all, you know all lines have a slope, and we will talk about slope tomorrow. Lines also have two other characteristics. They have an x-intercept, which is where the graph crosses the x-axis. And they have a y-intercept, which is where the graph crosses the y-axis. It's also important to know that an x-intercept is also known as a zero of the function. An x-intercept is also known as a zero of the function. It's just another name for it. So over here on the left, I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to label my intercepts. So I'm going to draw my line to look like this. So my x-intercept is going to be the point on the x-axis, which is here. X-intercepts are always in the form of x and then zero. Always, always, always. For all x-intercepts, the y value is zero. And the y-intercept is going to be the point on the y-axis, and all y-intercepts are 0 and then y. So every single time, every time, for a y-intercept, x will be 0. For an x-intercept, y will be 0. It's important to note that every single line can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. Every line can be written in that form. And our y-intercept is always our b value. Our y-intercept is always our b value. It is our beginning. It is also considered our starting point. Or another word that might describe that is it could be our initial value. And last but certainly not least, it is our b. It's where we begin. So in our equations, like that we've been solving for y, because we've been doing this, this number that's by itself is our b value. It's our y-intercept. It's our beginning. So number one, ask us to identify the x-intercept and y-intercept in the zero of the graph. So my x-intercept is where the graph touches the x-axis, which is here. That's the ordered pair 30, 0. And remember, whatever my x-intercept is, is also my 0, because they're the same. So my 0 would also be the ordered pair, 30, 0. My y-intercept is where the graph touches the y-axis, which is here. And that's going to be the ordered pair, 0, 25. On number 2, on number 2, my x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis, which is here. And that's at the value 2. 0, it's the ordered pair 2, 0. Remember, that's also my 0 because they're the same. My y-intercept is where the graph crosses or touches the y-axis, which is here, and that's at the ordered pair 0, negative 2. Recall that we said that our y-intercept in a word problem, we could say our y-intercept was, so it's the, where the graph crosses the y-axis, it's also our beginning or our starting value, our initial value. So on problem three, John began with $75. So that tells us that our y-intercept is going to be 75 because that was the beginning value. Number four, Riley began with 300 baseball cards. So because he began with 300 baseball cards, our y-intercept is 300. Now, it asks us to identify the x-intercept of this situation. In word problems, the x-intercept is where you run out of something or where you hit empty, or where there's nothing left. So if Riley began with 300 baseball cards, he gave 10 to each of his friends until he had 100 left. So to ask what the y-intercept was, well, the y-intercept would be when he ran out of baseball cards. And the thing is, he's never going to run out of baseball cards because it says that he still had 100 left. So the y-intercept, the x-intercept in this equation, there is none. It's not ever going to touch the x-axis. Number five, Ashley's car cost $12,000 and she made monthly payments of $300. Well, our y-intercept is going to be where we began. Well, we're beginning. It cost $12,000 to start with, so that's our y-intercept. 
And our x-intercept is going to be when we run out, well, when we make all of our payments, so when we don't know anything on the car. So if it started out at $12,000 and we're making monthly payments of $300, the x-intercept is going to be when we don't have any more car payments. So $12,000 divided by $300 is going to be 40 months. So that would be our x-intercept in this case. It would be 0, I'm sorry, 40, 0. So remember, our x-intercept is always the when the y is 0, so that's whenever the money is 0 in this case, whenever there's no money left. So on problem 6, we had an equation, y equals a negative 3x plus 5, and we're supposed to identify our y-intercept. Well, our y-intercept is where the, it's the B value, and it's in Y equals form. It's the B value. It's the beginning. So it's by itself. So my Y-intercept is going to be the ordered pair 0, 5. To find our X-intercept, we're going to have to do a little bit more work. What we know about our X-intercept is it's always in the form of X and then 0. So our Y value is 0. So we can go and take this equation that we're given y equals negative 3x plus 5, and we can substitute in 0 for y, so 0 equals negative 3x plus 5, and we can solve this for x, which we know how to do. We've been solving equations. So we're going to draw our line. I'm going to label my sides. x is on one side, everything else on the other. So my negative 3x is on the wrong side, so I'm going to move it, and it's going to become a positive 3x on the left. So I'm left with 3x equals 5, and to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I get x equals 5 thirds. So that would be my x-intercept. So all I did was I substituted zero for y in order to find my x-intercept. I substitute 0 for y. So on problem 7, I'm supposed to find the x-intercept and y-intercept. Well, to find the y-intercept, I could. there's a couple things I could do. I can solve this for y, which is the easiest thing to do. So to solve this for y, we're going to draw our line. We're going to label our sides. We need our y's on one side, everything else on the other. So that means my 2x is on the wrong side, so I'm going to move it to the other side, and it's going to become a positive 2x. And then it's gone. Remember, this negative is still there. That's a negative 1y, so to get rid of a negative 1, I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. So I'm left with y equals negative 4 divided by negative 1 is positive 4. Positive 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2x. So my equation is y equals 4 minus 2x. Well, my y-intercept is what's the, it's the b value. It's what is by itself. So in this case, that's the 4. So my y-intercept would be the ordered pair 0, 4. So to find my x-intercept, remember we're going to substitute. We know that we know the ordered pair is going to be some number and then 0. We know that y is 0, so we can substitute 0 in for y. And it's actually easier to do that in our original problem. So our original problem said 2x minus y equals negative 4. So to find the y-intercept, I'm going to replace to find the x-intercept, I'm sorry, I'm going to replace y with 0. To find the, the x-intercept, I'm going to replace y with 0. So I have 2x minus 0 equals negative 4, which is really just 2x equals negative 4. So then to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I get that x equals negative 2. So that would be my x-intercept, negative 2, 0. For problem 8, I need to find my y-intercept, so I'm going to solve for y, which means I need y's on one side, everything else on the other. So to get rid of that 4, I'm going to divide by 4, and it's going to go away. So I get y equals negative x, that means there's a 1 there, so that's negative 1 over 4x. Well, my y-intercept is the b value, it's what's by itself, it's what's added here. 
Well, there is nothing added there, so that really means that there is a plus zero. There is a plus zero here. So my y-intercept is actually going to be zero in this case. So it's the ordered pair zero, zero. Well, then I have to find my x-intercept. Well, to find the x-intercept, remember we know that the y value is zero. So we can plug that into the equation. Four times zero equals negative x. Well, four times zero is zero equals negative x. If zero equals negative x, there's a negative, there's a one there in front of that negative x, negative one x. So I'm gonna divide both sides by negative one and I get zero equals x. So in this case, my x-intercept is also the ordered pair zero, zero, which makes sense because for my y-intercept, we know that x is always zero. For my x-intercept, we know that y is always zero and these are both the same ordered pair, zero, for problems nine and 10, we're going to identify again our y-intercept and our x-intercept both. So my y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis, which is going to be up here at positive one. So in an ordered pair form, that would be the ordered pair zero, one. My x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis, which is over here at negative three. So that's gonna be the ordered pair negative three, zero. And again, I have my x-intercept and y-intercept. So my y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis, which is up here at positive three. So in order to pair form, that's gonna be zero, three. And my x-intercept is gonna be where the graph crosses the x-axis, which is down here at four. So that is the ordered pair four, zero. Last thing, so don't forget if you're asked to identify the zero of the function, if you're asked to identify the zero of the function, it is the same as the x-intercept every time it is the same as the x-intercept.